that uh, that would be the uh, is it the original sign from no it's from not no ah, okay the damage we had to just replace it. Ah. now I know that it was July 26 2007 closes for the last time it was uh, Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix you guys took over in 1978 so that's a long stretch was it about 1978 I think you guys about 70 I, I have I'm confused about that okay frankly, but it's I 70s you watching, reckon um, I think I was 18 when it opened, but you make okay. it 76. Okay, I right. Could be 19, but we're going to stick with 78. Right. But I'm guessing that. The first film was the Last Snows of Spring. Okay, all right. I don't, I don't know if I know that one. That's outrageous. It's, not, it's one of those Italian dubs. Ah. There's a whole series of. A porno them. film. A porno yeah, film. No, oh, no, we had those. Ah, right. two. We, had, we had the Lemon Popsicle ones. Yeah, there. Oh, oh, there so you go. Yeah. The Confessions <laughs> of. And, all but, the Confessions but, days were brilliant. I suppose if we started that last day, though, uh, in 2007, can you remember how you felt? There must have been on some level, you know, there would have been relief that you know, you're able to, you know kind of finally close something that is maybe isn't working the way it should but I'm sure it was very uh, mixed emotions about massive mixed emotions because at that stage you got to remember we were involved in Dundrum right and Dundrum had basically shut down the south side of, of Dublin City because Bray closed just before us a month before not, yeah not too great for or not too great hurrahs or for or anything like that yeah when this closed um it made massive headlines. Um, right. It was it was seen as a big community thing that was gone. But then the last night of Harry Potter, I think we had twenty people turned up. There was no right. great feeling of we're going to miss this. Or See, yeah, I think again and again you you recognise that in people's nostalgia and the sense of what they grew up with, they they obviously it's a it's a natural thing. You want that to be yeah. part of your children's life and yeah. still part of your life. But the the reality is all over the country and certainly in, in Blessing and Arklo and as you say Bray yeah, right. all these cinemas were gone yeah. you were the last man standing really in the area so the simple fact is that as much as people have deep nostalgia and they still say oh we should open the cinema again they would come out maybe once a month if you're lucky I mean with, yeah. with, with respect do you take the film club you take yeah. the that you're involved you yeah. take the the movies at the Cove yeah. there aren't tens of thousands of people looking for tickets no that's you it, know, you know, it's already a sign of... It's it's a myth that, and this town in particular with no indigenous industry, like the five biggest employers are five supermarkets. Right, This right. town is empty during the day, they've all gone to work. Sure, sure. The, the, it's not it's not what people think it is. It's yeah. not this idyllic, everything will work here. Sure. And the cinema's going to cost you the guts of 800,000 euro per screen to put sure. around. And you can't survive on less than six or eight screens. So yeah. you know, do the math. Can Grace don't support that? Have, having been stung before, no. But then yeah. you never know what's around the corner. Sure. And I think most of most people would would, would admit that they spend ninety nine point nine percent of their nightlife on the couch watching you know a huge selection of TVs. If they're going to go out, yeah. you know, they're going to go to Dublin. They're going to go to Dundrum. Yeah. They're going to make a big night of it. So the idea that they would support a local, you know, and the theatre. There's a beautiful theatre, one of the best oh, in, yeah. in the country. And you know, it can be. A struggle to get 70 or 80 people out of, of 20,000 yes. people to, to and, that, and that's that's yeah. that you see if, if you're trying to do that on a single well, well Event, you could not you know. a single screen right um i mean i know how tough it was it was great from from the day that star wars opened boom 77 the whole, the, there the you whole, go the whole cinema exhibition landscape changed because all of a sudden there was no bar on when they could play on right. day of release because right. Tala wasn't inside the city and they were getting films day and date so all of a sudden here had Batman the big one on the day Star Wars day and date E.T. day and date nice. Greece day and date I mean <laughs> it was just it was yeah. boom time now we should we should jump back a little bit I know that it, it's reckoned it was during the Second World War that this opened as a cinema I, my you, grandfather would have worked my grandfather Sperling would have worked on this right okay and um, the Kavanagh family built Kavanagh family in Arkham built all the Ormond cinemas and basically right. designed and built them by hand almost so all the old decor you would have seen inside here yeah. in the old days when it was the two was floors all, and, was all yeah. done by hand and painted by hand wow. by, by Jim Kavanagh's son and it was very much a family thing and they would do their Friday for one day, Friday, Saturday, Sunday for one day, Monday mm. for one day, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday right. for one day. And they would literally travel around all their Ormond cinemas with those films in the back of a van. <laughs> so it'd be Monday here, it'd be Tuesday in Wicklow, nice. it'd be Wednesday in Arklo. And that was what they did to keep the product churning over. Um, but it's, it's all changed. Um, but that decision for you guys to sort of take it over in, in you know, we say seventy eight or thereabouts, was, was that a, was that just inevitable? Was it? No, my dad um, was a builder, um, and always wanted a hardware shop. Ah. And this was for sale, and he bought it, and he put the hardware shop in downstairs. 
and um, Jim Cavanagh, who was coming to meet him, who he bought the cinema from, met him here one day and said, would you not think about putting a little cinema upstairs since you haven't used the upstairs? I'll introduce some yeah. people, introduce the wards, the Andersons, and we hooked up with them and we opened here. They went around the, the country um, twinning and tripling their old cinemas. Right. So we did Wicklow, Arklow, Turles, Middleton, Dungarvan. We did we did loads. We did all of those up, up till the early eighties when there was a big drop in cinema trade, and that that conversion thing dropped off. So there's a lot of a lot of local cinemas are rescued in that in that era. Okay. That became they became twos and threes and, and right, so on. Right. And and that was how we just we fell into it by accident. We were never cinema people, but, but, <laughs> we, but we love being cinema but it, people now. It had, a, it, had a, it had a beautiful run, and I certainly, it'd be a big part of my growing up, going down to the cinema here, and yeah. whether it's Bruce Lee or Pink Panther yeah. or whatever yeah. happened to be the our Star Wars. And just, I think also too, we were a sort of, a, a, not that we were, you know, completely innocent, but, you know, we believed in, 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 in the magic of David, but we might be an alien, and this yeah. might be true, and this is all possible. And so there was a but sort life of... Was, life is more innocent then. Yeah, yeah. With less distractions. Sure. We, we had TV, radio, and cinema, and the pub. Yeah, and, that was and, it. and it was buried. It was treasure. You, it, like to, to, to get to see that movie, you didn't sort of think I'll go home and watch it online, or yeah. I'll find that somewhere yeah. else, or I'll you see it next no week. Option. You had to find. You had to be there when it happened. I mean, we we play Greece here day of release, and we played it three times a day, which meant on um, three three sessions each day, we put 160 people into that into that building. Wow! And the queues were down to the bridge. <laughs> <laughs> and you know when you got to the second house here though anyone past the second house wasn't getting in right and you get that titanic yeah. and star wars effect uh, where people go to the same film a few times because well, they're I mean, just so I obsessed mean, greece greece um people went to it umpteen times another yeah. great one was airplane airplane oh, man you could play airplane here every week we had that on the beach that's a uh, yeah. absolutely <laughs> wonderful film yeah so now, funny i was thinking that i don't know if you if you personally have certain memories now i we, we have it up on the guide already but there was that wonderful afternoon that young michael jackson decided this would be a nice place Nighttime. to bring his kids night time so he brings his kids here and he has a kind of a and private screening drum. Okay, all yeah. right, there you go. Um, would the, I don't know whether you yourself would have certain kind of, um, like, I, I guess, like those movies like Greece and Star Wars that create a, a true phenomenon in the town must be a joy. But are there memories for you? Well, well the, the seeing all the smiling, singing people leaving after every show of Greece was, was <laughs> uplifting. Um, yeah. The best, the, 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 the most significant memory is working here for matinee for um, uh, Escape to Victory. Okay. The World War Two soccer yeah, movie. Yeah. And um, and it gets the penalty shoot out at the end, and and, and Stallone's in goal, and the hundred and sixty people is a hush in the cinema, and it's all in slow motion. You go see. Well, I was I would have been better doing it, but he, he ran through the air, and it's all slow motion. He pushes the ball away, but the hundred and sixty kids just leapt up <laughs> and screamed. And as I stood at the back, I, I went. Yeah, this is why I do. That's it. what it's about. Yeah, you know, it's that believing in a moment, and yeah. it just like it's, a, it, it's just totally yeah. nothing else in the world mattered except yeah. saving this penalty. Well, that cinema seat should be a seat in a roller coaster, if, if you know, and depending <laughs> on your taste and all that. But you know, Toy, Toy Story Four, for example, is a perfect movie, and yeah. there's there's a movies that really genuinely, yeah. by the end of it, you are feeling like you've but been the somewhere. Demand, the demands are greater now. On from a distribution point of view, films are more expensive to play than they yeah. were back in in the heyday of here right um so the pressure is on you to take money in the on those films in the opening weeks in sure. the hope that they'll run down to the weeks when they're cheaper but right. nowadays they have a shelf life of six eight weeks. weeks yeah yeah now admittedly i got 69 weeks out of greatest showman in boom that is a that's I a phenomenon a half. yeah <laughs> <laughs> but that old school thing that you know Spielberg and Lucas changed the picture where it used to be you, you, you hit the big cities and you built and built the yeah, audience yeah. but then suddenly you, you open to a thousand screens yeah, rather than yeah. four or five screens as Spielberg said Hollywood learned how to you know you could uh, de uh, delta before you, could, you know, they smelt it kind of yeah, thing exactly. you never knew what you were getting you just had to go and see it though well the lucky thing we had with the likes of an E.T. Um, particularly I remember E.T. E.T. had about four weeks of massive pe newspaper coverage right. in Ireland because it had been released in the States and it was huge. Right. So when E.T. hit the shores here... It was like the biggest publicity there, campaign there was, you could have... people queuing on the Thursday anywhere right. just in case right. the cinema might be built in the morning, you know? Um, <laughs> so we had... Yeah. There's, there's an advantage and disadvantage of day and date with the U.S., Right. If you if you've booked a film in that you're getting three weeks after the US and the flops, and you've no idea it's got that. Right, right. You know you've bu you booked yeah. this wedding and yeah. it's raining. <laughs> you can't. You have to go through with it. So we do also have the, of course, 
it's going to be forever remembered by millions of people who've never been here by Father Ted, which was a kind of a lovely thing that they chose. You know, I know it's best day ever. Right there, best you go. Best day ever. And it sort of immortalizes um, the, the cinema down itself. Down here from five o'clock in the morning um, with um, with the guys. Um, loads of chats with Frank Kelly, who's a yeah. lots of friends in Greystones. I would have known Frank Kelly. Uh, from my Gaiety Theatre days, right, and, and he remembered conversation. He was just one of these genuine wow. people. Nice. And um, but very funny thing, a young guy was working as a gripper or something or whatever he might have been doing. He came up to get the keys to the cinema at five o'clock in the morning, and um, I gave him the keys. And I popped down later on, and then he told me he'd reversed into a car. Holy moly! And he, it was his mother's car, and he'd done a runner. Then I got accused of, of being the one who reversed into the car. But well, there's my car. <laughs> Holy um, moly. But that was a great day. We we <laughs> opened the and if, an interesting thing of that is the the episode where they have the fun fair on the okay. island and oh, you yeah. have the spinning cat and the pool. Yeah, yeah. All, that, like, all good stuff. The, um, the fortune tellers scene in the in the tent was meant to be filmed on Port Marnock Beach the day before when it was too windy. Ah. So I so suggest they, they to... set up on the stage and we just we just shake the, the nice. sides. So they filmed the Isn't that great? They filmed the wow. the fortune teller scene <laughs> on the stage in the cinema. Um, but that will be it'll be forever the Father Ted cinema. Right. Um, right. Which is a lovely thing to have, I mean, you know. My friend well. Ian Stutchbury I played football with for from many, many years ago. He went away to join the army and I got a phone call one night maybe 15 years since I'd seen him. I, got, I recognized the voice at three o'clock in the morning. I went, is that Stutch? And he says, yeah, it's me. I'm, I'm in a hotel in Bahrain and I'm watching your cinema on the television. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I think stuff like Father Ted. Now, I I worked uh, in Hot Press with the two writers, and and it was one of those things where you just wish that for anybody you know that they get that kind of success. And it's not so much that they were successful; it's genuinely a loved, you oh, know, and sitcom. It, it, and it, 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 the humour yeah. it's brilliant. And, yeah. And the two ladies doing the the, the thing about um, the Neil Jordan movie. Right. Was, um, it's just it's just yeah. brilliant. There's lots. Just, yeah. The Crying Game, I think, yeah, was it? Crying or, yeah. Game. Yeah. Yes. There you go. It's just brilliant. Now we should say that 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 there's there's always, and we've sort of addressed it really, I guess, already. People People who would say, "Oh, you know, it'd be great to, to open this again." You obviously know that it just, unfortunately, it just wouldn't work in this town, in this age. People just do not call out to a single screen cinema in big numbers enough, yeah. most likely, to, to, to justify. So, it's sure. chances are, it's not going to happen. No, in, f from our point of view, we have no plans to reopen this at right. the moment. Um, right. A lot of the online stuff you get people saying wouldn't be great if they showed all black and white movies. Everyone would go. Oh, they definitely the all go. Out. The oh, yeah, for sure, for out. sure, they'd be I mean, all. I, out. I play <laughs> events in, in Dundrum, and we're. Uh, actually done drum and swords and done garvin are the the highest events playing cinemas in the world we're up right. to about a thousand events now since we started in nice. 2009 even with the marketing behind them from big companies sure. they're a hard sell so yeah. if i decide i'm going to show casablanca know, or whatever casablanca yeah. or yeah. north by northwest i mean how do i get that out you, you don't you need something behind it sure um there's a fallacy that pe if you build it they will come in fact if you build it they won't necessarily yeah. bother the rocks. i think if you build a free bar they will come oh yeah they'll yeah. come <laughs> and they'll probably yeah. moment you hadn't got the right there beer. you go yeah. that, but that's great stuff that is great stones so uh so, so, i suppose in, in wrapping it up but was there any time you know that that while you were while you were running the cinema that that I don't know. You just thought this will last forever. I don't know if one, one, especially I suppose with the success like Greece or ET or anything like that, there must be that feeling. Well, of course, people are just going to watch movies. It's always going to be like this. I don't know. I think I got, I got bitten by the cinema bug, and um, and always saw saw myself as working in entertainment, even though making money was important. The showman element was yeah. more important. Right. Um, so when the guys in the pub heard the Saturday Night Fever was coming, they said Graham is swirling a bit. Nightmare to live with. Graham Spurn used to sit in the bar with his friends and never danced the rugby club. I mean, 50p in, two pints and change my pounds. I mean, that was a great oh, night. Holy moly. Um, they should bring back those nights. And, and I, well, they should. Um, so I decided that's what they want. Um, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll, I, so I, I, I hunted down. I found a lovely lady in Grayson who was uh, taking dance classes. It was Barbara Donnelly? Or I'm not telling you who it was. Okay. Um, <laughs> and I, I piled along with her to her dance classes and I took a little bit from each of the six. Saturday Night Fever dance they were doing. I put that together as my routine. Beautiful. I went off and I, I won the <laughs> I won the disco dance champions to the Big Apple in Bray. And nice. You know, 
Yeah, they're, yeah. They're, they're, that's all part of my whole DNA. The sure. whole entertainment thing is, is what it's all about. And of course, it's got to be fun. I mean, that's, you know, whatever about, even if the film's a, a kind of, you know, a, a heartbreaker, there's still that element that this is magic. This is, uh, you know, we're, we're in a. The, the, I mean, I have, I book for my four cinemas, I program my four cinemas. Yeah. And whether one person turns up or a thousand people turn up or 10,000 people turn up, there's the same work involved. Sure. I have to do the same process. My accounts people have to process an invoice. But when it works, when it kicks into gear, like oh, my yeah. greatest show, man, that yeah. just ran and ran and ran and ran. Yeah. And I even have my sign, thank you, from, from uh, Hugh Jackman. Ah, deadly. After there my you 50, go. fifth week. Nice. <laughs> Um, well, I suppose uh, if this is a difficult one given the, the experience you've had would, there, would you have a favourite film or is that impossible to, to... do I have a favourite film um, do I have a favourite film um, I'd have loads of favourite films the one I would watch consistently and enjoy from start to finish would be um, oh, no porn now just so no, to no, say no, no, right. no, no I gave right, up right. and I'm too old for all that um, The Field of Dreams Oh, deadly! Okay, all and right. That, I, you are guaranteed to see tears floating down my cheeks. Boom! There um, you go. You realise this gap in the corner, and um, <laughs> that to me should be an archetype of de rigueur. Every Father's Day, you got to show that, and you got to bring your dad to watch it. You know that's. Boom. Um, and I'm tempted now my favourite film of all time would be Groundhog Day and I'm tempted to show it on February 2nd every oh, year oh great movie oh great perfect movie. movie but just that idea that we could say it's Groundhog Day 2 Groundhog Day 3 Groundhog Brilliant. Day 4 just keep showing the um, same film that'll we, work we had a situation <laughs> in, in the States in a restaurant at a conference and we went back the next year and we were in uh, Disney's um Celebration Town, which oh, is a bit right. like Groundhog Day. Sure, Rides yeah, I, was, I, was, I talked to Roy Disney and about so that. Yeah, the poor girl who served us in year one was actually served us in year two. So we, we had this Groundhog Day, and we just started repeating the conversation all over again <laughs> until after a four visits the table, she realised what was going on. Yeah. <laughs> but it was absolutely yeah. hilarious. Pleasantville, there you go. <laughs> but yeah, well done. And as I said, great memories. And I think uh, people, if they give it any kind of moment thought, they know, of course, that it's. Uh, it's just you know logic kind of took over that you couldn't sustain when you've if got some, like your if some yeah. developer decides to build a six screen cinema up in Charles Land right we'd be in the pot to rent it great there you go that'll work that'll yeah. work nice um, Magico well as I said great memories and I think uh, it's a monument to a, a, a lot of people's uh, formative years do you think anybody was conceived in the back row here I think there might have been difficult to know but there was, there was a few candidates there all right, right. over the years um, and we should say a big big uh, thank you to, to the, you've had like you know, Danny Hatton uh, Mary Mitchell uh, Caroline Malloy Nancy Fee great no, uh, Nancy, Nancy Fee will always be my absolute favourite she right. was just a treasure to work with right so funny um and the other memories would be, would be Deirdre Keeley um, ah, as well as great, great. and giving me my Irish Times every evening so I do the crosswords <laughs> when I was watching the reels go through little little, little sure. things like that well it's community French, like, that, yeah. but that was my community that was my football yeah. community sure so sure. I mean I was one of the few Protestants who played soccer for Greystones right and, but I was able to you know, mix, we all mixed across barriers in of course. those days and stuff like and, film and music cuts across every the, barrier I think the worst thing we ever did was kick the odd lamppost in the hope that the bulb would blow out so know? was you guys Robin Orch, oh, that's good this is a confession I'll just, I'll just, I'll just I'm going to head there right to the guard yeah, station it's, with it's this the, right the one, now one just on the corner of the Burnaby swing, that, Jesus swing Christ around, Jesus we were, every, people have been asking <laughs> that for years <laughs>